Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Welcome to a very special Greener Data edition of Data Movers. I'm your host, Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO and founder of JSA, along with my fabulous co-host, top B2B social media influencer, Mr. Evan Christel. Hey, Evan. Hey, Jamie. Welcome uh, to Data Movers, where we sit down with the most influential men and women in today's modern data center and telecom world, meeting the requirements of this new normal. So, Jamie, can you tell this is not a fake background? This is actually a, a real background yeah. back in the real world at cool. HIMS, the the big health IT show of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, so what about you? Are you getting out in the real world these days? No, but I will be, <laughs> actually. Uh, HIMS, I hear, is amazing. Uh, it's, it's great to see uh, things are starting to reconnect uh, live in person. I will actually... Um, be at ITW uh, in a couple of weeks, and that will be my first time seeing our, our international community in, in years. So, uh, yeah, crazy. So no masks, I see, huh? Well, um, I, I am wearing one. I'm like the one guy in Florida still wearing a mask, so I'm easily <laughs> to identify. And if, you, if you've seen the hashtag COVID is not over, you, you'll realize that uh, parts of the world are, are being uh, uh, swamped by COVID again. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're, we're in this, uh, this strange new place, but speaking of, of places and interesting topics beyond COVID, I think we have a great guest today. We certainly do. We certainly do. Um, as you know, our guests are, uh, always top of the industry, uh, thought leaders, uh, incredible background stories, careers, um, that we, uh, love to hear their highs, their lows, their unique perspectives of the future of our industry. So I am so excited to bring on one of our authors of Greener Data, the, the multi-author book that will be dropping on Earth Day, April 22nd, um, but also, of course, the CEO of BDX, Mr. Brahm Singh. Welcome, Brahm. Thanks, Jamie. It's nice to be back with you. Oh, it is. Good to pleasure. see you. Good to see you. Yes, indeed. And it's only been a year. Uh, nothing, nothing really has happened in the past year, so I'm not sure what, what we can talk <laughs> about. But, uh, oh. but I, all seriousness, refresh our recollection. Who is BDX and your mission and uh, what you're up to in the past year? It's been a while. Thanks, Evans. Yeah, so BDX is, you know, they, they say we are the fastest growing data center in Asia. Mm -hmm. um, I would tend to agree, uh, given the pace at which we are moving. So we essentially have uh, uh, a data center footprint in Asia. We have two, so in, in Nanjing, one is, uh, already up and running, the other one's being built. We have one in Guangzhou, uh, and then we have two in Hong Kong and one more being built. We have one in Singapore. We would, we want to have more, but you know, Singapore authorities are coming down on data centers. They want us to be sustainable. And then we have, we're just acquiring four more in Indonesia and building one. So this is what we have. And we are now next looking at Taiwan where we would be acquiring and building also. So mm -hmm. as you can see, it's been a busy year. year and you know, we are, we are barely two years old. And, and the last year has been, since I spoke to you, it's been frantic, but it's been fun. Oh my God, Taiwan. Oh my, my goodness. It's been uh, such incredible uh, accomplishments. You know, we should also know BDX celebrating its second anniversary just a couple of months ago. So it's, it is not, uh, you know, not just a year from uh, last time we chatted, but uh, two years uh, for you guys um, together yes. rocking. Congratulations on all of that significant Thank you. growth. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we should know that you have been uh, doing this with a focus on sustainability. Not that um, I'm preaching to my Singapore friends are, are here, um, but uh, can you tell us a little bit uh, about BDX's initiatives on this, particularly your 360 view? Sure, Jamie. Sure. So you know, you, you said two years. It's almost like it's just been yesterday since I flew down from Virginia yeah. to set up the BDX business. You know, it just time flies. Eh? So um, to your question, 
we the data center industry is a big guzzler of power. We all know that. Uh, open secret. Uh, none of us can, uh, uh, you know, sidestep sustainability. Um, and uh, governments like Singapore won't allow us to in, in any case. So within the context of, of the uh, data center construct, sustainability means efficient use of power. Mm -hmm. Now, and of course, green power. You, you move away from dirty power, green power. But, you know, so all of us are caught up in this, how to get green power. But in the larger context of sustainability, what's happening in the big bad world out there, it took 360 View, this product that we use to, as our power management tool. It took that, it took the carbon footprint management capabilities of 360 View to open our eyes or my eyes at least to the broader sustainability world out there and the issues therein. You know, you have Kyoto, with all its failings, who knew, right? I mean, what was happening there, the way the system was being gamed all these years. Uh, uh, and I'm not using that lightly. Uh, uh, and um, how it could so easily be resolved by something like 360 View connected to a carbon blockchain and you have a good, adequate, elegant solution to, uh, for the problems that, that uh, plague uh, sustainability. Uh, and the carbon trade. So but, uh, there. what does 360 View do for those of our viewers who might not already know? So 360 View is uh, basically, a, uh, you know, uh, for the data center world, there's a DCIM, that's a data center information management system with a big focus on power. It, man it, it, it manages our power for us. It makes sure we are efficient power-wise. But it's also got a, a carbon accounting tool in it. So it manages your carbon footprint. Now, managing carbon footprints is a multi-billion dollar business. And 360 View manages your carbon footprint for you and then connects back to a carbon blockchain. Um, sorry, connects back to a blockchain, which could then connect to any carbon blockchain or any carbon registry to submit your greenhouse gas, gas submissions. So, you know, it's a very elegant automated way of connecting a carbon footprint to the carbon registry and making sure that the whole, the provenance of a carbon credit is, is established, right? Uh, which is so important given the way the system is being gamed. Um, but, you know, it's difficult for the various authorities, the, the, it's such a splintered world out there in sustainability um, for them all to come together and come up with a solution. Uh, but we have it. We have the solution. And we are actually giving it away free. Uh, uh, so because, you know, Jamie, it's not my, you know, sustainability is not my bread and butter, right? I mean, my, I'm a data center guy. So, but I have this great tool, my team, with, you know, being very conscious people, the way they have uh, cr uh, worked hard and created this tool uh, for the sustainability world, we're giving it away. So we use it for, for DCIM purposes. Anyone wants to use it for DCIM, of course, you've got to pay. But if you're using it for carbon accounting and for your greenhouse gas submissions, just take it and do it. It's the least we can do. Amazing. Uh, yeah. first, and first of its kind, as, as far as I can tell. Um, and you've been very busy in your core business. You're growing and expanding in some of the biggest markets in the world, in Nanjing and in Hong Kong. And there you are in Singapore uh, as well. Uh, by the way, on a side note, I, I, I really need a, a road trip to view your facilities in Singapore. <laughs> there, are, there are about three noodle places that I, I'm desperate to visit. Uh, oh, you so have no up. idea. The food <laughs> here. Right. I know. I, I haven't been there since pre-pandemic. But back, getting back to tra on track, you know, how have you managed through this uh, this growth phase you're in? And what was important about Singapore beyond the good noodles? Uh, what's the market there like? Singapore is, you know, is, is the perfect hub mm. for the data center business. And by hub, you know, and it's not just because of the ease of travel and the fact that they have uh, maintained this ease of travel through these times of COVID, unlike many other uh, locations, right? So 
it's not just that, but it's also the perfect ecosystem for the data center business. You know, this car, you know, to, to, if I have to run and grow my business, I need a talent pool, I need a vendor ecosystem, I need infrastructure, I need, you know, the rule of law. And all of this comes together very nicely in Singapore. Uh, I was mentioning to someone the other day, uh, you know, as a kid uh, growing up in Bombay in India, I would always wonder why are all the traders of a particular commodity all lined up on one street? So the silver traders are on one street and the, yeah. and the copper traders. Are, so why are they all together? You know? and, the, and of course, the reason is the whole buzz that thing creates and the ecosystem it builds up. And that's why you have these places like you, know, you have Silicon Valley, you have uh, uh, Ashburn that's close to where I live. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, Frankfurt, Amsterdam and you have Singapore. Yeah. Uh, now, they tell me Singapore is the second largest such data center hub in the world. So after Ashburn, it's Singapore's next. And if you were to fly from Ashburn across the Atlantic to London, Paris, then you have London, which is a hub. You have Paris, which is a hub. You have Amsterdam. You have Frankfurt, another great data center hub. And yeah. then Evans, you have nothing. Fly all the way, nothing till you hit Singapore. So that's how important Singapore is. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, this also uh, makes me think of uh, your recent announcement in MOU with the National University of Singapore and SEMCORP. Can you tell us a little bit about how that partnership helps you and your partners support uh, these joint priorities around sustainability? Well, so with, with them, I think the first thing we have done is very experimental, you know, floating data centers and, and floating uh, solar farms, which is, so the floating data center is a little uh, uh, more exotic than floating solar farms, which by the way, are pretty much there. Uh, there are a lot of floating solar farms. So these are the two things we're doing with them. The other thing we're doing with them is using, pitching to the Singapore government, working with the Singapore government to, use something like 360 view and carbon blockchains to make Singapore a premium hub for carbon trading. Uh, you know, let me quickly go into that. So carbon trading, uh, un unless, you unless you can verify the origins, the, the provenance of a carbon credit, uh, the value is questionable. So, but with, with, with uh, as I just explained, with 360 view and a carbon blockchain, you can establish the provenance of a, of a carbon credit. And, and if Singapore just focuses on automating the carbon trade, you can charge a premium for the, for the carbon credits you sell through your, through your exchange. And that's what we're pitching to them. And the last thing we're doing with, with the university is, um, is how to release what we call uh, stranded power you know, this power in our data centers that we call stranded. It's uh, so you have power uh, not being used because it's buffered. You have power not being used because it's redundant and also power because of inefficient servers, you know, servers are not using powers efficiently. So we're working with them how to have uh, uh, liquid immersed servers and other, uh, other, you know, very exotic stuff that I'm, I'm just, don't have that. I'm not a rocket scientist, but my guys are working with them to to on all these cutting edge features to towards sustainability. Yeah, and and some of our chapters too. We talk further about uh, stranded power and uh, what we can yes. be doing or or not doing with it um, to to help get greener. So I, I love that you touched upon that. And and Brahm, if you could, um, if you have pointed out that analysts predict offset purchases. I'm sorry again. Um, you have pointed out that analysts predict offset purchases that they could be more than 50 billion by 2030. That's a big number, $50 billion, um, if not sooner, but that there may be some inconsistencies with these measures. Can you elaborate on this? Well, the inconsistency, Jamie, is is you know, staring us all in the face. There's this big elephant in the room that no one wants to talk about. And let me just, you know, so you have on one side, like you said, 
carbon trade going by leaps and bounds, right? And they say 50 billion is what the number they threw at us, um, the analysts, as where it's going to be, right? However, so the carbon trade is going up by leaps and bounds, but the greenhouse gases are not coming down commensurately. <coughs> the greenhouse gases are right where they are, but the trade Something's is going wrong up. there. Something yeah. is wrong, isn't it? Because if every carbon credit means one ton of greenhouse gas should be reduced. Yeah. Right? It isn't being reduced. And that is the inconsistency that you're talking about, right? Yes. And it's a huge problem. And so where's the proof? Is Bram Singh talking out of his hat? Is there proof? Well, guess what? In COP26, they completely disbanded the CER. Uh, that's the, uh, the Certified Emission Reduction Certificate Program of the UN that was initiated at Kyoto. They disbanded it because it was just riddled with fraud. They never used the word fraud. They never said we have a fraud problem, but they disbanded it. And now there's a new system being put into place through the Paris Accord. Now, why was it disbanded? Because of this inconsistency. And why did the inconsistency happen? Well, it's very simple. You have something called additionality, right? Additionality is an interesting concept. It means you can only earn a carbon credit if you put in that additional work, you know, money, effort towards reducing greenhouse gas. Mm. But, you know, you can't just have something that would have happened anyway and say, oh, I've reduced the greenhouse gas and claim a carbon credit. But they're being claimed. And then you have the, uh, uh, you know, you have multiple uh, trades from the same carbon credit. So I generate a carbon credit and then I sell it to you for and so you can offset your footprint. And then I also sell the same carbon credit to Evans because then he can offset his footprint because there's no record, right? When I sell it to him, mm. he doesn't know I've already sold it to you. Yeah, yeah. And you can power see the how blockchain. blockchain could really help this. Yeah. That's how yeah. they bingo, bingo, guys. That's where it could help. There you are. Wow, there's so, so much to unpack here. Hard. And I yeah, I'm learning so much from your experience really at the bleeding edge of sustainability. But if, if there's one takeaway, one, uh, one thing you would implement to drive sustainability in our industry, what would that one thing be if you could have your, your choice? I mean, so in the data center industry, you know, we live and die by PUE, the power utilization efficiency, right? And PUE is our God. Well, I would, so what 360 View has done is enforce the CUE concept. So how much carbon are we going, giving up, giving out into the air uh, uh, to generate the energy being used for our IT system? So, you know, you also have WUE, that's how much water are you using for, for the powering IT systems. But in the ambit of what I can offer as solutions, it's the CUE. So what we want to tell other the industry is what we are doing is we're no longer just saying PUE. We're also saying we measure our CUE and our investors demand it from us. So actually the 360 view has made our investors more you know, demanding like, okay, you got that tool, great. Now you better show me your CUE, do your carbon audit and let us have it every year. So that's what we're doing. And we hope the industry does that too. Yeah, and, and I love uh, so, so many of our chapters have uh, have been dedicated to um, investors only investing uh, in, in greener projects and facilities um, who are measuring their CUE. Um, so I, there is a shift happening. We are, we're on it. You're leading the way. Um, so I so appreciate all that you do. And here you are, 2 a.m. your time. Uh, so let's get this a little bit more lively before we, we let you go, my friend. <laughs> yeah, we'll, um, we'll, 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 uh, we'll wake you up a little bit with some embarrassing questions. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, well, I'll start with our rapid fire questions. So uh, you're a really interesting guy for those who aren't aware. You've lived in many cities around the world. So which is which is your favorite, if if you can pick one and why? Well, you know, favorite would be uh, well, it should be my home in Virginia. I love Virginia with a passion. But <laughs> if I was to choose a, I do, I do. It's just a beautiful, beautiful place, and I miss it so. But if uh, my favorite favorite place would, would have to be Bali, you know, I have the beach mm. there. You have the oh, mountain wow. in the wood. It is, yeah, Bali hands down 
uh, it is my favorite place, yes. That is definitely on my bucket list. And okay, so we talked about uh, noodles, particularly in Singapore, uh, but what is your favorite meal? Uh, I think it has to be a, a nice bowl of Vietnamese pho. That's my favorite, 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 yeah. Vietnamese. We have some some good uh, some good restaurants here in in Southern California, but I, I think I need to go to Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we have lots of, of Vietnamese Americans who are doing good, yeah. making good food. What about holidays? Is that is that uh, vacations? Is that uh, you know uh, uh, locally, or where do you like to go? Like cities, mountains, beaches, uh, etc. Um, again, you know, being in Asia is 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 is, uh, is spoils you. You can just hop on, or at least pre-COVID, you would hop on a plane and just be in Bali or be in Thailand or, 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 or you know, uh, Indonesia. Indonesia is fascinating. I would actually recommend Indonesia as uh, as a must, you know, place to must visit. It, it is just brilliant. Uh, it's got such culture, such a deep set. Um, uh, culture and history in, in various cities, including Bali, of course. That Indonesia is, I think, my my all time favorite. Awesome, place. awesome, Jamie. We we may we may need a data movers Indonesia edition. I'm uh, I'm not sure our, our spouses and families would appreciate it, but yeah, uh, I'm sure my CFO will, will say to me, "What? <laughs> tell me, tell me again the ROI." I, but I am. I, totally I can spin that. that. I can spin that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brown, you are often, of course, a man on the move. Um, but when you finally get time to go ahead and relax, what are you most likely doing? You know, I'm behind on my book, my second novel. My publisher is threatening me. He wants his advance back. And, you know, you know, you give a writer money in advance is the dumbest thing you can do. You're never getting it back. It's so. gone. <laughs> it's <laughs> gone. <laughs> so I'm, I'm scrambling to finish the book. That's what I'm doing. Oh, well. Okay, well, there'll be many, many more 2 a.m. Um, uh, nights uh, ahead for you. <laughs> but, but thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I know you're a busy, busy guy, and we appreciate all the work Not you're a- doing at the leading edge of sustainability in the data center. I had no idea that, uh, you know, we were so far advanced, at least in the work you're doing. Not at all. It's such a pleasure, two of you. It's always fun talking to you both. Uh, thank you. Likewise. And thank you also uh, for contributing your chapter in Greener Data. I'm so thrilled and honored. Um, your words, your insight, your your inspiration. And uh, we look forward to further promoting that uh, with you uh, this year forward. So uh, thank you again, everybody. And viewers, if you enjoyed today's Data Mover podcast just as much as we did, go ahead and check it out at jsa.net slash podcast for upcoming episodes releasing every other week on Wednesday mornings. And follow us on Twitter at Jay Scotto and Evan Gerstel, and we will follow you back. Take care, everyone. And always stay safe, guys. Get green. Happy networking.